I welcome you to this session on uh, large virtual address support uh, 52 bit in ARM64 kernel. So we are going to talk about the relevant implementation details and discuss some pain points. Uh, so, um, hi, I'm Abhay Sharma. I currently work with Lenaro. Uh, I hope you are taking good care of yourself during uh, the pandemic. You know, usually large address uh, support is a very frequently talked about topic, but you know, it can become boring quite quickly. So, uh, I, I, I've tried to, you know, make this talk a bit, uh, you know, in a sense condensed, but not so condensed that, uh, you know, it becomes boring for you. So, I did a similar talk uh, on the same topic in LinuxCon Australia a month back or so, uh, virtually. And this is actually an update on that, uh, on the same talk. Basically, I tried to gather all the feedback that the people had to share there, and then I just incorporated uh, a few changes uh, in the talk accordingly. Yeah, you can find an uh, open source uh, article I have written for the open source magazine uh, on this topic also. So probably that will also provide you some more details. So in this talk, I'll try to talk uh, mainly, you know, in terms of the large address support on ARM64. Uh, I'll try to, you know, demystify a few details. So let's open up the mystery box a little, just uh, bit by bit. Uh, so first, uh, you know, a bit about myself. Uh, so I work currently with Lenaro as part of the landing team. Uh, so this is my snap from the last in-person conference I attended in 2019, you know, when you could travel freely. <laughs> so missing those days, right? So uh, mainly bootloaders and Linux kernel interest me. I contribute to, uh, you know, several upstream open source projects like Linux, EFI and Uboot bootloaders. Uh, recently, I've also started contributing to user space utilities like KXIC tools, uh, make them file. I also co-maintain the crash utility tool uh, upstream. That's a user space uh, tool. So, uh, all right, so let's uh, see what we are going to talk about today, right? First, we are going to talk about the large virtual address support for ARM, the what and the how, so the basics. Then we are going to discuss a bit about the existing kernel memory layout on ARM64. Thereafter, we will discuss about flipping the ARM64 kernel memory map. So, for accommodating the increased memory range. So, I'm going to talk about what happens with this flipping uh, in detail. Then we will talk about something very important, you know, what happens to user space. So what happens mainly to the existing user space applications, which expect pointers, let's say, from the existing 48-bit address uh, range from the kernel. How do they keep on working? Uh, also, we will discuss about some of the user space applications that were broken after these, you know, kernel map changes. Uh, thereafter, we will discuss how a user space application can explicitly request addresses from the 52-bit kernel range. Uh, later on, uh, I'll talk a bit about how to test the VA support, especially if you don't have a real ARM64 hardware, how do you test, uh, you know, these changes, uh, this support. Uh, and at the very end, I'll try to share some suggestions and uh, suggest some uh, next steps. Right, so let's begin. Okay. So I hope all of you uh, here have heard about 64 hardware and you know how it is uh, moved very quickly from good to have to at the minimum required feature for various computing use cases. So you can think of edge routers all the way up to servers, right? So or you can think about supercomputers, you know, just at the uh, top most end of the spectrum. So you can think of several such existing use cases, right? So 64 bit hardware allows you to well, in theory, it uh, allows you to connect to up to 16 uh, exabytes uh, of memory. It's quite huge, right? So we recently saw a server with uh, 64 terabyte uh, memory connected to it. Uh, and this was the x86 machine, but, you know, uh, we are uh, going to see more and more uh, such servers coming up on other architectures, well, it's, uh, similarly for ARM. So uh, we have more and more use cases coming up that require addressing the ranges larger than what is normally allowed by a 48-bit virtual addressing CPU, right? So do note that uh, there are still some limitations still, right? Not all the processors support the full 64-bit uh, virtual or physical address space. So we'll talk about that more in the upcoming slides. Also, uh, do note that I'll focus this talk mainly on ARM64 architecture 
and mainly talk only about the virtual address support uh, requirements. Uh, you know, just to save on time. So similar discussion applies to the physical address space requirements for ARM64, the increased uh, virtual address sp uh, space when we talk about uh, physical address space. But I'll mainly concentrate this talk on ARM64 and the virtual address space. So let's see uh, what happens further. All right, so in the previous slides, uh, slide, we mainly talk about the architectural limitation in the CPU design for addressing the complete 64-bit memory map. So let's see how uh, you know two well-used architectures um, champions in their own right, right? Uh, fair in terms of the virtual addressing capabilities. So Intel uh, x86 64-bit basically introduced the five-level page uh, table support in both hardware and software in its tenth uh, generation Ice Lake course. So course like i3, i5, i7. These uh, support five-level uh, page tables which allow them to address up to 57-bit virtual address speed. Uh, note that this bumps the possible virtual addressing space all the way up to 128 pebibytes. And the physical addressing space also gets a bump, uh, and it, it is bumped to 4 pebibytes. Quite a leap, right? So uh, on the similar lines, ARM64 um, uh, introduced two new architecture extensions. So these are called the 15-bit addressing extensions namely the ARM um, VA.2LVA and ARM um, VA.2LPA, where LVA stands for large virtual addressing and LPA stands for large physical addressing. So uh, these are actually uh, part of the ARM V8 application profile architecture version 8.2. Uh, so it is expected that the ARM64 cores with these extensions will allow you uh, to address all the way up to uh, uh, you know, four pebibyte of virtual and physical address space. Again, quite a big jump as compared to the earlier maximum support of 256 terabytes that was achievable with the maximum 48 bit address support that was available earlier. So we saw that both x86 and ARM64 they have you know increased the uh, the uh, the virtual and physical address support uh, that is available and you can basically try to use these new features to develop applications that require addressing larger uh, RAM range. Okay, so just a quick recap of the previous slide from ARM64 perspective. And so we got to know that the ARM V8.2 application processors mainly from the Cortex-A family, such as the A55, A75, and A76, these provide two extensions. These are called the LVA and the LPA extensions, respectively. And the CPUs with these extensions provide you to uh, a capability to address 52-bit uh, address ranges, which is quite a big jump from the earlier support that was available with the 48-bit address space. So this makes these ARM cores, you know, possible candidates for high-end applications like servers or even supercomputers, you know, use cases like that which also require a low power profile. So a low power profile is basically a USB for USB for ARM64 cores. So if you want to address larger address ranges as well as, you know, consume less power doing that, uh, probably, you know, uh, using these ARM cores make uh, more sense for you. Then uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, uh, talk a bit about address spaces, you know, uh, in the previous slide, we basically tried to talk about 48-bit uh, and 52-bit address spaces. But basically what happens in the background when a CPU tries to read from or write to an address? So let's see what happens there. Uh, I'm sure folks here know a lot about MMU hardware uh, already, so I'm not going to uh, take a deep dive, uh, you know, uh, explaining uh, the role of MMU and how it separates the virtual and physical address space. But uh, let's see a simple example, you know, how to, uh, to understand how a hardware model works. When a CPU issues a virtual address and it needs to find an equivalent uh, physical address for that same. So here I'm taking an example that is specifically suited for ARM64 architecture. But the basic underlying principle is valid for other architectures also. So when an ARM64 processor issues a virtual address for an instruction fetch or a data access, the MMU hardware basically translates this virtual address to the corresponding physical address. And this happens uh, using a phenomena which is called the translation table walk. 
So usually a translation table walk comprises of one or more translation table lookups. So in this example, I'm going to show three translation table levels. Level one is the topmost level and level three is the lowermost. So in each translation table lookup, uh, you basically get a descriptor as a return, which indicates one of the following. Either the entry is the final entry of the walk. In this case, the entry contains the physical address and the associated permissions and attributes for this access. Or an additional level of lookup is required. In this case, the entry contains the translation table base address for the next lookup. So you can see this uh, from the figure uh, that I have just shared in the slide that there are three level uh, page tables. Level one is the you know the, the highest one and level three is the lowermost one. So each uh, descriptor is either pointing to a physical address or it's pointing to the base address of the next level lookup table. So now in the next slide, let's look uh, you know what happens from a software perspective particularly how the Linux kernel supports these uh, translation tables. Okay, so uh, on this slide, we will try uh, and see how things mainly happen from a Linux point of view. So the ARM64 architecture currently supports the base sizes of uh, 4K, 16K and 64K. So of these, uh, uh, mainly, uh, you know, the normally used space sizes are 4K and 64K. So 4K is mainly used for the embedded profiles, whereas the 64K is used for the server profiles. Uh, let's look at the virtual addressing ranges uh, supported when a 4K base size is used. So first is a 39-bit addressing range, uh, which allows you uh, up to three translation table levels. Uh, the second is the 48-bit uh, addressing range, which allows you up to four translation table levels. So you can refer to the ARM64 memory documentation page uh, that resides inside the kernel uh, documentation uh, for more details. Furthermore, uh, continuing on the Linux details, uh, so for the 64K page size, which is normally used for the server profile, Let's look at the virtual addressing ranges supported. So first is a 42-bit uh, addressing range, which allows you trans two translation table levels. The second is a 52-bit addressing range, uh, which allows three translation uh, table levels. Note that the translation table levels for 64K and 52-bit uh, addressing, uh, you know, uh, versus the 4K base size and the 48-bit uh, addressing are intentionally kept the same to minimize the effort that is required for moving from 48 bits all the way up to 52 bit address space. Just uh, the number of the descriptors in the first uh, translation level are expanded for the 52 bit addressing. Again, you can refer to the ARM64 memory documentation uh, page that resides in the kernel documentation for more details. Okay, so uh, in my view, the best way to understand the 52-bit address space on ARM64 is to have a look at an example, right? So uh, we saw in the previous slide that uh, the 52-bit support is only available with a page size of 64K and it requires three levels of page tables. So let's see how the three level kernel page tables, yeah, the, for the topmost one is the page global directory, PGD, uh, then the next one is called page middle directory, PMD, and the, uh, the last one, PT, which is called the page table entries, fit into the pack picture here. Uh, let's start from our earlier premise. The core issues a 64-bit virtual address, and we want to find out an equivalent physical address for the same on ARM64. So on the extreme left uh, of the picture, you can see the TTPR select bit, which is bit number 63. So it selects basically bes between the kernel space and user space addresses. So TTPR X holds basically the base address of the level one page table. Now bits 51 down to 42 in the incoming virtual address tell us about the PGD index in the level one table. Similarly, bits 41 down to 29 in the incoming virtual address tell us about the PMD index in the level 2 table. And lastly, bits 28 down to 16 in the incoming virtual address tell us about the PT index in the level 3 table. So finally, the derived PTE value 
in, and the lowermost 16 bits of the virtual address are combined to determine the final physical address value. So I hope this example makes things more clear. So as you can see in the figure, we have three page tables, level one, level two, level three, and certain bands of the bits of the incoming virtual addresses are used to index into these uh, tables. I hope uh, you know this makes things uh, more clear. Again, feel uh, free to refer to the ARM V8 uh, documentation from ARM, uh, mainly regarding the address translation for more details. Right. So we come to an uh, you know uh, interesting uh, aspect here. So how do we decide the kernel design approach to support both the older ARM64 CPUs, which don't support the 15-bit extensions, and also support the newer ones, which do? So in the kernel, we have selected an approach to keep a single binary and make a decision at the early boot time to check if the underlying hardware supports the 52-bit extensions or not. So if it does, the kernel uses a 52-bit virtual addressing mode. Otherwise, it falls back to the default 48-bit or low virtual addressing mode. So let's take an example of two platforms, the Ampere EMAC uh, ARM64 workstation, which doesn't have the support for the new extensions and the newer Fujitsu FX700, which claims support for the V8.2 extensions. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, you can, as, as you can see uh, in the figure here, uh, that uh, you know, the figure demonstrates that the decision about the addressing range to, uh, to support is made at the early boot time. And accordingly, either the 48-bit or the 52-bit addressing range is used. Uh, again, you can refer to the ARM64 memory documentation page, page inside the kernel documentation for more details. Uh, fair enough. So uh, on this slide, we'll just quickly look at the kernel variables, which the kernel code uses, mainly to make sure that it handles both the 48-bit virtual address as well as the 52-bit virtual address with and also it is able to make an early boot time decision to switch uh, from 48-bit to the 52-bit virtual address space if required. So it uses uh, mainly three variables. Uh, there are others as well, but you know, just uh, not very useful for this discussion. So let's uh, discuss about these three variables first. These are the VA bits, uh, VA bits minimum and VA bits actual. So the VA bits uh, is actually denoting the maximum size of the virtual address space. The VA bits minimum is denoting the minimum size of the virtual address space, whereas VA bits actual denotes the actual size of the VA space. So if you really want to check the VA address space range supported by your running ARM64 kernel, you should look at the value reported by the variable VA bits actual. So let's uh, move further. Uh, so uh, do we need to keep something uh, additional in mind when we talk about the increased memory map support in ARM64? Uh, surely, uh, we do need to keep in mind that you know the kernel memory layout was flipped uh, starting from kernel version 5.4 to allow a larger virtual address space support. Let's look at the figures on the slide to understand this better. By default, with up to 48-bit virtual address support, the ARM64 kernel map Look something shown on the left side. Uh, the direct linear range was, you know, mapped at the farthest end of the of the memory range, whereas the kernel text range was uh, kept near the uh, lower uh, address ranges. For the 52-bit support, we flipped basically the uh, the kernel memory map, uh, but we decided to keep the kernel text addresses same as earlier. So the direct uh, linear map range goes from FFFFFF all zeros uh, address and uh, whereas after a gap of the kernel address uh, sanitizer, the Kasan, uh, the kernel text and other addressing ranges uh, they are kept. So this flipped kernel, kernel map actually causes some interesting problems in the user space. So let's uh, look at them in the next slide. Right then, so what happens in the user space then? Unfortunately, due to the flip in the kernel memory map, a few user space applications, uh, especially the ones that are used to debug live kernel or which are used to analyze the VM core dumps, Before they get broken. I uh, just to interrupt, just yeah. wanted to let you know that yeah. there are five minutes left. So far, we don't have sure. questions. So okay. go ahead. Sure, no problem. 
Okay, so uh, unfortunately because of this flip, uh, we actually have some use case applications broken. Uh, the main reason for that is that these applications also need to perform a virtual address to physical address conversion. So you can see that some applications like exit tools, cache utility and make them files, these were broken after the changes uh, starting from kernel versions 5.4. So I have proposed uh, some fixes for these utilities. While some have been accepted, others are still pending some discussion. So you can, uh, you know, look at these uh, details uh, using the hyperlinks on the slides uh, and just have a look, you know, just to understand what happens. So I know the million dollar question coming up right now in your mind is uh, what would be, you know, what happens when, uh, uh, you know, we use other applications which are not used for debugging kernel per se. Uh, what happens to these existing applications? Do they break because they are expecting uh, address from the kernel which is 50, 48 bit? So uh, the answer is no, because we decided to keep an opt-in model for the use space applications. That is the kernel by default will return address from the 48 bit range. Right. And if the user space applications really want a, a, a pointer from the 50 bit range, they can explicitly pass a hint, let's say in the MMAP call, to request an address in that range. Uh, so the obvious question that would pop in your mind now is how can I test the 52 bit uh, virtual address support, especially if you don't have any real ARM64 hardware? Um, you need not worry, simulation is actually your friend here. So first option is using Quemu. So you can basically uh, use uh, Quemu. I have used an example of running the Quemu ARM64 guest on my Fedora x86 host uh, here. For the same, you can use the Word Builder tool. Uh, here I'm creating a Fedora 30 ARM64 guest. Then you can launch the same using Quemu. The second option is to use the ARM V8 fast simulator model which can be downloaded freely from the ARM website. You can get more information about these models from the ARM website. I have uh, added a link for that in my slides. You can exercise Linux, Debian or Fedora images on that scene. So you can see the a screenshot of the simulator model running a Fedora 30 ARM64 image uh, in the slide below. Right then, so what are some of the pain points in the next step? The first step is to fix the broken debugging uh, related user space applications, which is a work in progress. I hope these will be fixed very soon. The next would be, you know, just to make yourself and others aware of the flipped kernel address map after the kernel version 5.4. So this might, uh, you know, cause some issues. So just be aware of that. Also, newer or willing uh, application owners can give the 52-bit addressing a try. They can uh, pass, for example, a hint, specific hint to the MMAP call just to see that they can address, uh, get an address that is in the 52-bit range from the kernel. The next is expect more changes uh, around this feature in the near future because it's still getting stabilized. So, uh, for example, ERD has already, you know, merged a path set to extend the direct linear map range for the 52-bit configurations. So towards that, I would just say test the upstream kernel if possible and, you know, report issues if there are any upstream. So mm -hmm. we, have a uh, quick, we have a question from David. Um, yeah. Are the pending yeah. discussion requirement tools like TechSex, it is uh, related directly to the memory mapping or other related issues? Uh, sorry, Anna, could you repeat mm -hmm. that? Sure. Are the pending discussion requirement tools yeah. like Backsex related directly to the memory mapping or other related issues? Yes. So mainly it's memory mapping. So there were some uh, user space applications that were broken. So I think these should be fixed pretty soon. Also, the 52-bit hard hardware is just, you know, coming up. Uh, we have started just testing that mainly the vehicle available was a simulator model. Now we are seeing a few uh, hardware coming up uh, that, that support these extensions. So the discussions are, were mainly, you know, uh, centered around what's broken and what can be addressed uh, through the new uh, flipped kernel mem memory map range. Uh, but yeah, uh, expect that there would be more, you know, more uh, discussions and more changes. Uh, so just keep an eye on the ARM64 memory.txt. I think it would uh, be uh, changed uh, a bit further uh, in the coming days.